Uh, well, first off, uh, let, let me say uh, thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, speak with uh, Real Film News today. Um, uh, I guess the first question I have for you is, um, you've been quoted as saying, you know, with the popular trend of uh, vampire films, you know, i.e. Twilight, uh, that you were inspired to make your own vampire film that said, you know, this is what uh, teenagers really think of this. Um, do you think that that is a problem with film these days that are, are geared towards teenagers, in your opinion, um, an unrealistic interpretation of, you know, what you what you consider like the, the teenage voice? I think sometimes it is. Um, I think as long as you recognize where your, um, like, what voice it is coming from, I think a good example, uh, I mean, well, John Hughes is a great example, or um, Adventureland by Greg Matola. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, um, I, I know with, with his film, with Adventureland, it was very much based on his own experiences, and so he had that to be drawing from. But I think if you're kind of pulling it out of nowhere, if you're like a, a 40-year-old dude that <laughs> how teenagers in 2011 talk, then... Or 2012, you know, depending. That was an actual quote I heard from a 40-year-old director. But, um, but, you know, saying this is how, you know, kids talk these days. Um, and, and you don't, and you're not a parent, and you don't, or you didn't draw from your own experiences. And I guess that it can feel wrong, I think. Um, and uh, for me, I mean, I just, you know, I pretty much grew on my high school experiences, which are very, you know, recent. <laughs> and so, uh I thought it would be a good place to be coming from. And it, but I, I think it goes both ways. I think it'd be very strange if I made some gangster drama about, like, you know, older adults. I wouldn't feel real at all. Right, um, right. Not having that experience. So, oh. so, yeah, it's all about your perspective. And, and I think you can be older and make a good teen film if you're drawing from your own experiences or something similar. Okay, okay. Um, well, uh, the backdrop of, uh, you know, obviously the backdrop is a sci-fi convention that you use for the film. Um, was that always intended to be the backdrop, um, uh, or was there something uh, different that you were intending to use at some point in the script when you were writing it? Um, well, the, the idea when I, when I first wanted to make the film, um, it first started off as not a teen vampire movie, it was just a teen movie set in a science fiction convention uh, based on the one that I go to every summer, which is very homemade, kind of like a, I call it a celebration of geekdom by geeks, I guess. Right, it's not right. not really like Comic Con that, you know, yeah, I, you know advertisement. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you that uh, afterwards, uh, what, what exactly you based it from, because I know you were quoted as saying that you based it from an event. I think, believe you said in Minnesota, and I, I, I myself, you know, I go to Comic Con every year, and and it, it's, I kind of had some deja vu of Comic Con, even though it may not, you know, necessarily be, you know, based off of that. Yeah, I think all those conventions. I mean, I think Comic Con's great too. I, I don't mean any, you know, disrespect to Comic Con, um, but. Twelve thousand. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so I think all those conventions are going to have that that connection to other people who are just as dirty, if not more dirty, which is which is cool. I think also like that fine line between you know poking fun at geeky people and uh, just straight up being like mean about it, you know? Because I think that's easy with any kind of stereotype. But I'm a big geek myself, so it was not direction I wanted to go. Okay, okay. Um, now, now, you stated on uh, numerous occasions that you had your actors uh, create their own uh, Facebook pages uh, for their characters, which I, I thought was, you know, quite brilliant and creative. Um, what what idea gave, wh what gave you the idea to use that as an exercise instead of something more traditional, uh, such as, you know, a journal that, that, you know, actors are normally told to, to write in? I really wanted... Um the kids to feel like a, a pre-established group of friends. And we'd all get together and they would take pictures together and we'd get lunch or, um, I don't know, kind of try and create a little bit um, what those relationships might have been because a lot of the kids had acting experience. 
experience, but not really feature film acting experience. And it's kind of, we had to bridge some techniques and make sure everyone was comfortable. And uh, a lot of that, I think, took place in pre-production. And uh, I don't know, <laughs> the Facebook thing just kind of came out of that, because I, I was out of town. I was actually at the convention, and when I asked the kids to make those Facebook pages, I was like, oh, great, I'll be out of town. They have to do it themselves. <laughs> they have to be up asking me, like, what should my last name be? And stuff. And I would ask people at the convention. So some of the some of the last names of the characters and a couple of details came from people at the convention I was randomly asking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I think it was a really great exercise for the kids that, that didn't feel, make them feel too on the spot as being, you know, lead actors in a feature film without previously having that experience because they all know what it's like to create a Facebook page. It's pretty easy. And uh, help them figure out some details. Okay, so probably you thought of it, it would be something a little less informal than, you know, the formal way, the formal way that, you know, uh, that, that people sometimes suggest with journals? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, okay. All right, uh, well, well, final question for you. Um, I know, know you were saying earlier that, and you've, you've been quoted as saying this also, that, that you, when, when you come up with ideas for your films, you always wanted to uh, uh, have it based off of your own experience in, term of, in terms of uh, authenticity. Um, what, what's next on your plate right now, um, seeing that you, you know, you're kind of in a different stage, you know, at this point um, in experiences that you have, you know, what, what, what's the uh, next film on, uh, on your plate? It's, um, I'm working a lot on it this morning, so I'm glad you asked. <laughs> um, it's, uh, coming of age, drama and comedy, I guess. I know that's kind of an awkward word to use in independent film, but We'll go for it. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's, it's pretty common these days, but go ahead. Yeah, um, but uh, it's, it's about a, an 18-year-old who doesn't realize he's too old to be trick-or-treating. <laughs> his friends and family are trying to give him the hint, but he loves it so much. <laughs> and uh, so it, it's a kind of sweet bad comedy in the vein of the Star Wars movie, like Breakfast Club. And uh, I think it's very atmospheric at Halloween. Um, so it's nothing supernatural, even though there's the holiday. But uh, I think it'll be a, I think it'll be a really fun movie. With a lot of comedy in it. Okay, and then what stage is that in right now? Are you in the process of shooting it, or are you still in the process of writing it at this point? Um, I uh, uh, actually I wrote the screenplay about a year ago, so I've been working on it for about a year. Okay. And um, and we're about to launch the Kickstarter for it. In the next, I mean, this week. Right? Oh, this week, tomorrow. <laughs> awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome. Okay, oh, well, uh, Emily, uh, thanks again for, you know, for speaking with Real Film News, and, uh, you know, good luck with everything that you have in the future. Thank you so much.